Screams filled the van as though a grenade was thrown. Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. Today we are back with another episode of Butterfly Soup. Today I do believe this is episode 7. So that's kind of crazy. Episode 7 already. Wow. Okay, so let's get right into the video. In the last episode of Butterfly Soup, we found Dia and Min, and now everyone's back on the field. So let's, I think we're gonna play against Niles. Finally, everyone's here. And no one fell victim to a serial killer. What a relief. Death bagels assemble. The other team is warming up on the field. Two of them break from the rest of the group and rush up to Dia. Dia rears back in fear and hides behind Noelle for a moment before she appears to recognize them. Dia, it's us. <gasps> oh, Dia high fives him with a brutally excessive amount of force. Their palms meet in a deafening clap. The victim swears and flaps the affected hand as if to shake off the sting. He's trying valiantly to smile, but there are tears of pain in his eyes. We made our team accept the match when we heard you were here. You look different from Min now. I can't believe this. Wouldn't it be more unbelievable if we still looked the same after all this time? Dia raises her hand at, for another high five. No, 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 I don't want it. <laughs> Dia, you know them? We know Hayden from elementary school, and Jen's my twin. Jen jolts at the sound of Min's voice, visibly shocked. Min, what are you doing here? Same thing as you, baseball. Do mom and dad know you're doing this? Do you even need to ask? Jen sighs, he seems really used to this. Now that everyone's here, let's get started. Since we're the home team, we're defending first. Liz hands Min what looks like a tiny white pouch filled with powder. A cloud of dust puffs out when she grabs it. We have Rosen to help improve your grip. Wow, real Rosen. Min is so excited that she accidentally inhales a bunch of the powder. <coughs> Hayden is the lead off hitter. Min spits on the ground for dramatic effect. Ew. Min, that's gross. Don't do that again. Wow, she's so tall. Thea crouches into position. As an afterthought, she points her index finger down at the ground. Min smugly nods back and straightens up on the mound. Since when do you have, since when, since when do you two have signs? Oh, they don't mean anything. We're just doing it because it looks cool. Min, <laughs> of course. Min winds up and throws. The ball comes in chest high, perfectly spinless. If someone had written a message on it, you could read it. Then it does what looks like a double dip and drops into Dia's glove. Hayden swings at it, but he's way off. God, was that scream really necessary? Hayden manages to skim the next pitch. It bounces up about an inch above the bat and plops down in front of the plate. Dia pounces on it and throws him out. No, what was that? A knuckleball? It's like a trick pitch. I don't trust it. I wonder if Min and Jen's parents are just short, because they seem, seem shorter than everyone else. Cursed. It's not cursed. It's like that because of physics. Cursed. Krissa yells out to the death bagels triumphantly. See, I told you I wasn't making it up. Sakura and Yuki exchange a look, then turn to Krissa with skeptical faces. Come on. The next batter swings helplessly at three knucklers and sits down. Jen Seo is up to bat up. <laughs> Jen Seo is up against his twin now. Min winds up and lets another knuckler go. He hit a line drive straight at a car Oh, it's coming toward me. I can't reach it with my hand. Are we seriously going to have to kick it? Akarsha kicked the ball. What the? What? She's now hopping around on one foot in pain. Yeah, no kidding. That would, that would hurt. Ow, ow. Why didn't you just catch it? Don't mind. What? Don't mind. They say that in sport anime when someone screws up. I'm literally going to throw up. You even said it with a fake Japanese accent. I'm so glad that I didn't do that. <laughs> 
Wait, I think it's a good idea though. It helps boost morale. The ball bounces back toward home plate. Dia scoops up the ball and hurls it to first. Out. What the? That actually worked? Yes, I'm a certified genius. My Nobel Prize. You're not getting a Nobel Prize for kicking a ball instead of catching it the right way. Okay, so we're in the dugout. Um, oh, we don't have real dugouts. There's just a little bench for each side. Well, yes. They're not going to dig a hole in the ground for you, I'm sorry. What were you expecting? The school doesn't have an official baseball team, so we're lucky to even have this. I never got why dugouts need to be half underground like that. Like, it's not a freaking bomb shelter. Stop being so dramatic. Yeah, this is gonna stop a ball from hitting you. And most of the time there's stuff overhead as well. They're like in a little box. The death bagels take their seats on the bench except Dia, who's still taking off the catcher's gear. I've never put on catcher's gear, but I would assume it would... Well, I don't assume. I know it takes a long time to put on and take off. There's not quite enough space for everyone. Left standing, Dia hovers uncertainly beside them. There's not enough room. Then you can sit in my lap. Uh, shouldn't it be the other way around? Why the hell would it be the other way around? You're the smaller one. Oh no! Ow! Men kicked Akarsha really hard into the bench. Dia and Noel both startled at Akarsha's yelp. Neither of them saw the kick. Huh? What's wrong with you? Uh, she's glaring at me with a murderous look in her eyes. I, um, farted. I was trying to cover up the sound. What? Crap, I don't think she buys it. That's inconsistent with your past behavior. Last week, you told me the disgusting and unwanted fact that you had three consecutive farts that formed a D major triad. Why go through such lengths to mathis mask a single fart now? You're hiding something. I should scream now. As a distraction. <laughs> Blood curdling scream. Perfect. Just what this needed. Shut up, stop screaming. You're screaming too. The bench creaks a bit as Dia nervously lowers herself in Min's lap. I'd be scared too to like break her, even though I'm the same size as her. But if I was Dia, I'd be afraid of breaking her. Min immediately wraps an arm around Dia's waist. Uh, <laughs> I have to do this so we don't lose our balance. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Better watch out, Dia. Min's probably thinking about doing bad things to you. Akarsha. I want to do bad things to you, Akarsha. Really? Like what? Like snap your neck. How mean. John Cio is pitching against the death bagels. His throws look a lot faster than Min's. He strikes Esther out with ease. Out. Liz is keeping score with pencil and paper. She dutifully marks the <laughs> strikeout with a K. Why isn't a strikeout S or S-O? Why K? K is for killed. That can't be it. It's because S is already used for sacrifice. The K from the last letter of struck. That's a lame reason. Agreed, I like Min's reason better. Sakura is up to bat now. She whiffs the first pitch, but pops the second one up. I got it. He chases the ball into the foul territory and drives for it. Out. This situation sucks. If we were even able to get to first base, we could steal or do some weird shit, but nope. Actually, I did some research on that. In most cases, attempting to steal has a much higher chance of having a negative result than a positive one. Since most of us aren't that confident in our stealing skills, it would be better for us not to try it. What the hell are you saying? Stealing is important. No, it objectively has little value and is often actually detrimental. For steal attempts to not be detrimental, you have to succeed around 70% of the time. That's the point where you break even. The exact number depends on the situation but it's always around that range. For instance, for a runner on first with no outs, getting caught stealing will lose a team two thirds of a run on average, and a successful steal gains a third of a run. So for every three steal attempts, you need to confer at least two, or the only thing you're stealing is runs from your team. Do you succeed that often? If not, you're actually hurting the team's chances. 
Min looks like she's understood none of that. Shut your hell up, you lamp post. Shut your hell up. Lamp post? You can't reduce things down to numbers. Yes, I can. She uses a stick to scratch a formula into the dirt. Okay. Min quickly stomps out the formula. The evil is defeated. Those equations are just a bunch of word games. They're not real. Look, this isn't even a matter of opinion. I'm right. Numbers don't lie. There are things you can't see. Like what? Your feelings? The power of friendship? Does it not occur to you that perhaps your enemies have those things too? They're on both sides of the equation, so they cancel each other out. Oh my god, this is baseball, not rocket science. But this isn't rocket science. This is basic algebra. Bro, give it up. Noah hates being wrong. Actually, I wouldn't know. I'm not familiar with the sensation. Wow. Liz comes up and taps Akarsha on the shoulder. Hey, you're up to bat now. Akarsha lets out a prolonged croaking sound that lasts for 30 seconds. We're down two outs, so I better not screw this up. Akarsha picks up a bat and heads to plate. Does everyone not have their own? Oh god, this music. But, does not does everyone not have their own bat? I feel like that's pretty normal. In, intimidate the enemy with an impressive entrance. Use psychological warfare. Intimidate the enemy. Akarsha slowly does a... I don't know what that word is. Pose while maintaining eye contact with Juncio. This is the form grasp the bird's tail. Akarsha lies on her back and tries to jump onto her feet without using her hands. There's not enough momentum. She just flops back down. Wait for it, I got this. She tries it again. This time she manages to land on the balls of her feet, but doesn't have muscle to pull herself up. Defeated, she lands back on her butt. Akarsha, cut it out. Juncio doesn't look intimidated at all. He winds up and throws the ball. Akarsha isn't experienced enough to distinguish balls from strikes, so she randomly decides whether or not to swing. That, I mean, that's how we all start out. <laughs> Unsurprisingly, she racks up three strikes in an instant. No, my special technique. How about you practice more instead of using your pr special technique? It's time to switch sides now. The batter hits the ball towards Akarsha again. Akarsha fumbles the ball, allowing the runner to safely reach the bag. Thanks for screwing up. I didn't screw up, that was on purpose. The truth is, I'm a double agent. Just admit you messed up already. We all look so cute in our outfits, though. The killer whales have one out and a runner on first. The runner takes off as Juncio bunts the ball. It rolls slowly all the way down the foul line. Dia follows it closely, hovering over it like a hawk. What is she, what's she doing? If Dia can grab it when it's on the left side of the line, it counts as a foul. You can't run on foul balls, so the runner will have to return to first. The ball is still rolling almost exactly down the line. Akarsha runs ahead of the ball and drags her foot in the dirt to make a curve, <laughs> a path curving to the right. Hey! The ball hits the path and rolls foul. Dia quickly grabs it. I'm a triple agent. You can't just change allegiances to match whether or not you messed up. Oh, that was a really fast picture. <laughs> Min throws the next pitch for a strike. Nice work, time to switch sides again. That was fast. That's good, it means Min's knuckleball is working. We should give it a special name, like Knuckles. I'm not calling it a damn Sonic character. It can be butterfly related, since they flutter. Butterfly, butterfly thingy. Butterfly from Hell's Anus. The anus part wasn't necessary. Noel, you're up to bat. Akarsha ca calls Noel as she walks up to the plate. Wow, it's Noel, yowie mama. <laughs> Shut up, how mean. A swing and a miss. I wonder if Noel enjoys this. She's having fun. She's scowling as she swings the bat. That's just her personality. If she disliked it, she would have quit by now. That's true. Noel strikes out. Dia, you're next. Oh goodness, she's going up. Oh no. The catcher gets up and stands far off to the side, away from Dia. Jun throws it into his mitt. It's an initial walk. It's an intentional walk. Right off the bat, they haven't even seen her hit yet. They're scared of her. 
Hayden knows how strong she is from when we were little. They probably figure it's fine to let her have first since no one else on the team can get a hit. That's smart. It'll be hard for us to score without her. Once they've thrown four balls, Dia throws the bat to the side and trots to first. It looks like he made the right call because after Dia wa Dia's walk, the Death Bagels accumulate two more outs in an instant. Dia is stranded there until they switch sides. <laughs> Neither team manages to score for the next few innings. Oh, that's always so frustrating. Dia is still getting walked at each at bat, and the other Death Bagels aren't skilled enough to reliably hit the enemy's pitches. A few people manage to get hits off Min's knuckleball by chance, but no one's made it home yet. By the seventh inning, though, some of Min's luck starts to run out. Min's next pitch comes in high and inside, but instead of dropping, it soars right into the up into the air. Dia has to jump to catch it. That's the fourth ball. The batter knows his bat throws his bat aside and jogs to first base. The bases are loaded with no counts. Oh no. This is terrible. They're probably gonna score at least one goal. Did you just say goal? The next batter is a buff looking fellow. He smashes the pitch straight into the right field where Noel is. No, that's the worst possible person he could have hit it to. It's so far out that the ball is like a speck in the clouds. Noel is apprehensively backing up with her glove out, squinting up at the sky. She plants her feet firmly, shoulders width apart, reaches up and claps her free hand decisively over the glove. She caught it? She caught it? How is that possible? The runners all skid and scramble to reverse direction. They all need to tag up on their former bases now or they're out. No one thought she would catch it. Here's her chance. Noel throws it to Liz at second base. There's a loud slap noise as Liz covers her glove with her hand, preventing the ball from bouncing out. She easily tags the bag before Hayden can return to it. That's two outs, just one more. Liz rears up and throws to Akarsha, who's manning first base. What the hell? There's nothing in Liz's hand. She's throwing nothing at Akarsha. Akarsha pretends to catch it in her glove and tags first base before Jen reaches it. Out! The runners are dejectedly returning to their defense positions. A triple play? Jen is looking at Akarsha suspiciously. Yeah, that's, that's, that's good. Wait a minute, she's not holding anything. He saw, what? Where's the ball then? Heck if I know. How did you, how do you guys not know? I got it. Krissa plucks a missing ball from the grass in right field where it's been the entire time. Noel didn't even catch it in the first place. I knew it. So we're not out after all. No, you're all still out. The rule book states that if a runner abandons his effort to run the bases, he's out. You all clearly gave up. So it's still a triple play. You son of a Hey! That was actually a compliment, I think. It was a compliment. This feels kind of like an move though. On what planet do you guys live on where Noel isn't Is it okay to trick them like that? Isn't it cheating? It's not cheating. You guys deserve a freaking Academy Award for that performance just now. Especially Noel. Good job. Shut up, don't praise me like I'm a little kid. Are you crying? Uh, who typed this? I'm not crying. By the way, when you act like the ball is somewhere it's not, that's called a deke, short for decoy. Dekeys are an important part of infield play, like a feint. They're rarely as elaborate as the three-way deke we just pulled off, but it's the same idea. We the deke squad, get it? Oh my God, it's squad, but deke. Deke squad, deke squad, deke squad. Deaky squad. I bet the teachers always separate you two in class. You bring out the worst in each other. Oh, thanks for the compliment. <laughs> it's Akarsha's turn at bat again. There's already two outs and no one on base. The game is still tied zero to zero. Suddenly, Jen cries out from the mound. Wait, time out. My contact hurts. Oh, wow. Everyone pauses. What's wrong with it? I think I got dust under the lens. Face screwed up in pain. He takes out whatever appears to be a tiny plunger. What is that? It's for taking out contact lens. You're going to play without it on? You can't pitch like that. Hayden, didn't you say you wanted to try pitching? Right now? I've literally never pitched a ball in my life. Why not? There's a first time for everything. Jensio takes out 
the offending contact. He's now effectively blind in one eye. Okay, here goes nothing. Well, we all know what Akarsh is gonna do. I go to baseball games. I eat the baseballs. Uh, Hayden pitches the ball. Akarsha gets up just in time to take a wild swing at it. I somehow hit it! Through sheer luck, it's heading towards Jun, who's squinting up at it with his good eye. I got it! The ball hits him in the face. Akarsha makes it to second base in the confusion. Nice batting! Finally, for the first time in this entire game, someone's already on base when Dia is up. Even though Hayden is just walking Dia, he looks really scared to be pitching against her. He throws the next pitch. Everyone watches as the ball soars almost straight into the sky in a high arc. It drops back down about halfway to the plate. He did a Noel. Don't name errors after me. Hayden, what are you doing? Shut up, it slipped out of my hand. Hayden picks up the ball and tries again. He accidentally throws it straight at Dia's head. Okay, it is hard pitching when you've never pitched before. It just goes everywhere. Dia ducks. Uh, sorry. What the f is your problem? How dare you? Dia could have been killed. Men and Noel have stormed to the mound and are now bashing Hayden together. I'm calling the police. What? No one got hurt. It doesn't matter. That was criminal negligence. I will personally make sure your entire life is ruined. He should be executed. Executed? Hey, get back on the bench. Noel, put the phone down. No one's getting arrested. Men, where did you get more knives? I love these characters. Dia steps back up to the plate as Min and Noel are dragged back to the bench. They're both glowering in the corner. What? The, what? What? Darkly muttering to one another. There is no justice in this world. Both of you, knock it off. Hayden winds up and throws the ball. It's not far enough outside. Dia lunged out at it and made contact. She got a hit off the intentional walk attempt. She's just that good. She hammers it straight into right field, right at Juncio again. I got this, I got this. The ball rolls through his legs. Dia and Akarsha cross home plate to win the game. Yeah, I can't believe it. We won. You don't have to look so blatantly shocked. It's your first game, I can't believe it. The Niles team is departing. Men and Noel glare at Hayden as he goes into the van they arrived in. Are you guys still plotting revenge? I'll help, I'll let, I love drama. Are you still on your period? Maybe you can touch him with your cursed period blood hand again. Too late, man, the blood's brown now. They might think it's mud. There's nine of us though, so there's probably 2.25 other girls on their periods. What if we all got them to run at the boys' team from different directions? That'd be like a nightmare. I doubt anyone but you would agree to that plan. Honestly, the guys would probably freak out even if you just threw a clean pad at them. Oh my gosh, you're right. Thanks for the idea. No, no, don't do this. I refuse to be involved in this. This is friendship goals, Frenchman. If we go down, we all go down together. That's just a roundabout way of saying you're dragging me down with you. Akarsha pulls a pad from her backpack and rips the wrapper open with a loud crinkle. I don't get why they make the sound so conspicuous. I know, right? The only way they can make it more obvious is if they added firecrackers. Krissa is power walking over them. She has developed a sixth sense when some stupid is about to go down. Who's opening a pad out here? Uh... Noel quickly moves about 15 feet away and pretends not to know them. We gotta make this quick. We should soak it with something to make it more unknown. I have Gatorade. What flavor? Yellow one. Yellow flavor. Yes! I hate that I know you well enough to discern that you want it to look like pee. Pee girl. Akarsha pours a splash of the Gatorade on it. I feel like I'm doing one of those absorbency demonstrations in commercials. Our liquid is the wrong color though. It's always blue. Those cowards, they should use red like blood. Akarsha holds up their finished creation. I'm gonna throw it now. Should I? No! Do it! Akarsha flings the pad like a frisbee into the van. It hits Junzio on the shoulder. What is that? Ah! Jun goes down. Screams fill the van as though a grenade was thrown in. The team desperately scatters away from the deadly object. Someone is climbing out of the window. Ha <laughs> ha What did you brats do this time? Uh, run, run! Get back here! Gah! 
he is how. Okay everyone, this is where I'm leaving off today's episode. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to click like and subscribe and leave a comment down below. And turn on notifications to get notified every time I upload. That was one stressful game. But we won. And threw a pad at, inside a van. But anyways, guys. There will be more butterfly soup coming soon. Alright, I'll see you next time. Bye!